Hey everyone, I'm Iran Hammy. For Black History Month, we are highlighting the incredible accomplishments of several African Americans throughout the coastal bend who have pushed and broke barriers for the better. One of those people is Deborah Johnson. She used to work here at Fire Station Number no. Four, as well as many other fire stations, blazing a trail for many like her and her family. They don't do these books anymore. Deborah Johnson is taking a stroll down memory lane, looking at the equivalent of a yearbook for Corpus Christi firefighters. I became a firefighter in 1977. Johnson moved to Corpus Christi when she was 23 and was working as a secretary until a firefighter sarcastically told her the fire department is hiring. Feeling challenged, Johnson trained for 10 months, passed her tests, and became a firefighter trainee. Training was interesting. It was 10 guys and me. And only one of them was nice, Shorty. He was my size. But Johnson persevered and became a Corpus Christi firefighter. The first, I guess, four or five years was the hardest because the guys were mean. Were you the only female too? I was the only female at any station I was at. Johnson loved what she did. She took pride in being able to get the job done and made sure the guys could never criticize her for not doing the job well. I think the isolation was the hardest part of the first three years, because um, the stations were not designed for women. So when I was, when I came to old number six, they had put a locker between me and the guys, and it was one restroom. For over 29 years, she rode the roller coaster of not just being one of the first women firefighters in Corpus Christi, she was the first black female firefighter in Corpus Christi. And it wasn't until at a gala last year, she learned she was the first black female firefighter in the state of Texas. That's when it sunk in for her. Just hear those people talk about the accomplishments. And I thought, oh my God, that's special. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it wasn't all bad. Johnson had advocates looking out for her if someone tried to start trouble. And as the 90s rolled in, more younger guys joined the department, bringing in a new mentality. One of those younger guys was her son, Dwight Johnson. Being around the firehouse growing up, he took an interest in firefighting. She wanted me to go to college and become like an engineer or something like that. Because, you know, she, she came in a tough time in the department, you know, especially being black person then on top of that being a female black person. So that was really, really tough for the things she went through. Here's how that conversation went from Deborah's perspective. Oh, no, bubs. Nuh -uh. Stay in school. The department was prejudiced. It was racist. It was good old boy, you know? And it's like, uh-uh. I can deal with this. I just don't want you to have to go through that. Dwight says discrimination was out there and everywhere, and it wasn't going to stop him. And she's instilling me and me and my sister and my brother that you know you want you want to do something, you got to go get it. They're not going to give it to you. So that, that's how, how I was raised. Dwight came in the department in 1990 and has seen change, like more females working on the trucks. His mother definitely had left an impression on him to want to be a firefighter, but he gained a new respect for what she accomplished in the time she did it. Everybody wants to be a firefighter. You know, it's not till you get the job and you start doing the job, it's like, wow, my mom's one tough cookie. Deborah retired in 2006 after being injured during a Flower Bluff brush fire, but she says she's still impacting the city today. She's still involved with the Firefighters Union as well as the Retired Firefighters Union. She's been a court-appointed special advocate for 15 years, all this, and still enjoys time with grand and great-grandchildren. Don't tell me no dirty jokes. I won't tell you no, talk to you about Jesus, you know. Don't tell me anything racial. I mean, and the guys knew that right off the bat. But the, that crew at Tenzin, it was not, not so much as, I don't know. They would just leave the field. And I told the captain, hey, that offends me. Deborah's husband retired this past April, so they've made the decision that they are going to move back to Deborah's hometown of Waco. But we should all be on the lookout. Deborah plans to write a book about her time as a firefighter because she says she has many more stories to tell. Reporting in Corpus Christi, Aaron Hammy, Chris 6 News.